Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is find the difference of two arrays. So in this question, we are given two arrays, nums1 and nums2 and we have to return our output array of size 2 where the first element inside the output array is going to represent an array or a list of all the distinct numbers present inside nums1 which are not present inside nums2 and the second element inside the output array is going to be again a list of all distinct integers but now distinct integers in num2 which are not present inside nums1 so let's take the same example given to us as example 1 and now we have to form an output array right so i declare it which will contain two elements so the first element will represent another array and the second element is also representing another array now this part of the output will be coming from the distinct elements inside this and this part of the output will be coming from the distinct elements present inside this. The distinct elements present inside this array which are not present inside this are 1 is not present inside this so that is a distinct element, 2 is present inside this so that is not a distinct element, 3 is present inside nums1 but not inside nums2 so 3 is a distinct element. Now let's do the same for this, 2 is present inside nums1 so it is not a distinct element, 4 is present inside nums2 so it is a distinct element 6 is also a distinct element because it is not found inside nums1 so this will be our output now let's take a look at the code and see how we can implement these steps so a good data structure to use is a hash set because hash set does not store duplicate values so it can only store distinct values right so let's use a hash set so i'm going to write a general function which i'm going to call it inside the main function so let's focus on this part of the code so I declare two hash sets, set1 and set2, so they are initially empty, right? Now I am going to iterate through the nums2 array. So let's take the same example, I am iterating through the nums2 array from left to right and adding all the elements inside these into the set2. So 2, 4, 6 will be added inside set2. Now using the set, I am going to use it as a matcher and I am going to iterate through the nums1 array and going to check if elements inside nums1 are present inside set2 or not. So I am using this set2 as a reference and helper function should work for any requirement according to the parameters. First we are going to call it for nums1, nums2 and then we are going to call it for nums2, nums1. I will explain it when we get to the main method. Now we have to iterate through nums1. I am iterating through nums1 here and now I am going to check if 1 is present inside the set no it is not present so add 1 into set 1 now go for the next element next element is 2 check if 2 is present inside the set yes 2 is present so i am not going to add it inside set 1 go for the next element 3 3 is not present inside set 2 so add it into set 1 and finally i am going to create a list of all the elements present inside set 1 so 1 comma 3 is the first part of the answer so this 1 comma 3 will be stored here and finally our main method is going to return a list of list of integers so we got the first part of the answer now let's calculate the second part for that i'm going to call nums2 and nums1 so this is going to have 246 and this is going to have 123 now let's redo all the steps again for this parameter so let's iterate through nums2, nums2 is 1, 2, 3, so set1 is empty, set2 is empty. So iterate through nums2, nums2 is 1, 2, 3 now and add all those elements inside set2. So set2 will now have 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to use this set2 as a reference and iterate through nums1. Nums1 is now having 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6, first one we are pointing at 2. So check if 2 is present inside set2, 2 is present so don't add it. Next we point at 4. Check if 4 is present, 4 is not present, so add it inside set1. Next check for 6, 6 is not present inside set2, so add it inside set1. And we reached all the elements. Now we have our answer inside set1. So convert that into an array list because we are returning a list as the output. So 2, 4, 6, so 4, 6 will be stored here. And finally when you are calling it inside the main method with these parameters, so 4, 6 will be returned here. And finally you get your answer as 1 comma 3 and 4 comma 6 and that is the expected output as you can see here. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n where n is the length of the nums1 or nums2 
and the space complexity is also o of n because you are using a hash set to solve this question. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.